Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a spread footing of a real-life project. This is an expansion of an existing building. So this footing and column are existing, and they are adjacent to the property limit. So this footing and new column are adjacent to the existing footing, and also adjacent to the property line. So there's a lot of constraint of the geometry on this, on this footing. The goal is to design this footing there, which probably will be uh, eccentric in both directions, according to, to the sketch. Uh, we know that uh, the available space here is one six only, and the available space in the other direction is two feet to the property line. In you know, in, on this side could be anything, whatever is required, and also in the other direction would be could be any dimension, whatever is required. So the goal is to design this footing and uh, find out these two dimensions, the thickness and the reinforcement. So to do the design, we will use ASDIP Foundation. Let's open ASDIP Foundation. This is the project manager. We will create a calculation of spread footing. We assign a name, for example, real life example. The calculation has been created. Double click on it to open it. So this is a typical uh, uh, form of uh, spread footing design in ASDIP Foundation. The numbers here are uh, uh, default values don't mean anything to the example, so we can change whatever we have we need to. We will start with the uh, with the loads first. According to the statement, we have uh, dead load, live load, and wind load of five, ten, and twelve respectively, and uh, a lowball bearing pressure of uh, twenty five hundred psf. With this information, we're gonna enter. Uh, the numbers over here dead 5, live 10, win 12. Let's do that. Dead 5, live 10, and win 12. So we have the loads already there. Let's focus on the geometry. Graphically, we, we can see. Uh, the uh, the footing as, as as we go so we need to define some uh, initial dimensions in this case we can see that if the footing is square this eccentricity would be larger because this is this, this dimension is one six versus two in the other direction so let's start with something uh, for example as six by six or so and we can change it later let's start with a six by six footing We don't have any pedestal, but if it's six by six, the eccentricity, which is the distance from the center line of the footing to the center line of the column, the eccentricity would be, if this is six, the distance from three to the column is just one six, which is 18 inches, it's just there. In the other direction, if it's six by six is three, minus 2 is just 1 foot, so 12 in the other direction. So, if we use 6 by 6 with the corresponding eccentricities, uh, the footing would be would look like this. Uh, so we can see that this uh, area is uh, not in contact with, with soil. It's a pretty large area, let's see what percentage, percentage that is. 90% of the footing is in, in contact, so 10% looks like too much for uh, for uh, for a footing like this. So could be acceptable, but we we will try to uh, uh, to reduce this uh, zero stress area. Uh, for example, if we go with uh, if we reduce the eccentricity in the x direction, let's see instead of six, let's let's go with with five. So we need to change the eccentricity, of course, because now, now the eccentricity is, if this is 5, 
for, from two and a half minus one and a half is one foot, so 12 instead of 18. So with this uh, condition, uh, the uh, triangle is smaller. We should increase the thickness as well so that the cell weight of the footing counteracts the overturning and the eccentricity. So in the footing thickness, let's use maybe 20. It's, it's, it's small. Let me see what percentage, percentage that is. 94%. Let's uh, try to reduce it even more. Uh, even more than that. Let's go to the graph. Uh, thickness, maybe 24. Yeah, that's uh, much smaller. Let's see. 95%. I, I think it's acceptable. So we can start with that. 5 by 6 by 24. We don't have any pedestal. The steel columns are supported directly on top of the footing. No pedestal, so we no pedestal here. In this case, the columns are W12 and the base plates are 20 by 20. So the, the effective column size for uh, punching shear purposes would be one half of both. So from 12 to 20, 16 is, 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 one, is uh, the average. So 16 by 16 would be the equivalent uh, effective column. So 16 by 16 is correct here. The loads were already entered there. Regarding the bearing, bearing pressures, we know from the example, from the statement, that the allowable bearing pressure is uh, 2,500. So we need to input that here. Allowable soil pressure instead of 3, 2.5. The rest looks okay in the, in the materials. 3 for concrete, 16 for rebars. Uh, these are densities. Yeah, the rest is, is okay. So the uh, maximum bearing pressure here is 2.3 versus 2.5. We are okay. That's also reported here in the bearing pressures. 2.3 versus 2.5, so we are okay. The stability, we don't have stability issues in this in this footing. Everything is uh, gravity, and we don't have lateral load. Uh, the shear is, you know, the ratios are really small because the footing is quite thick to counteract the, uh, the overturning. So no issues with the shear either. Regarding the reinforcement, we need to work on the reverse. The whole area of the, fo of the footing is, is, is in compression, so only bottom reinforcement is actually necessary. Sometimes it would be advisable to use top reinforcement as well if we want to reduce the shrinkage at the top, particularly for this uh, thick uh, footing, like this one is, is 24 inches thick. Maybe it would be advisable to use uh, top reinforcement, maybe small rebars there to uh, reduce the shrinkage. But in this case, for uh, for the example, we use only bottom reinforcement, just uh, as an example. So let's go to our glance. We can see, uh, you know, the, let's use number sixes. Uh, let's use, for example, uh, six and six. For strength, it's okay because the, the footing is so thick that uh, we don't need that much rebar, but uh, we, we need to comply with the minimum reinforcement and also with the development length. Let's work on the, uh, the, uh, the minimum reinforcement. We are 18% over, so we need to increase number of rebars. Here, here probably we'd use uh, nine. Uh, we are we are already okay. Let's uh, increase also this one probably probably seven a little bit more. So we are eighty four percent of the minimum. We are okay in, in that. Regarding the uh, development length, yeah, th th this is pretty much obvious because we don't have enough development length here. We don't have enough enough uh, space to for the rebars to develop the capacity. So we need to hook them. We need to hook the x the x bars in this direction, the X-bars, in the positive 
uh, side. So in the plus X, we need to hook them. So let's go here to, to see what, what changes. Instead of, we are 50% over, so let's let's hook them. Yeah, if we hook them, is 0.75. So we need to hook uh, the, 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 the reverse in the positive uh, X, and, and uh, that works. In the contents, you can see a more detailed set of calculations. You know, organized by uh, topic, uh, the uh, controlling combinations are, are shown there for every every case. If more detailed calculations are necessary, the detail tab shows all the step by step hand type calculations with exposed formulas exposed formulas and also with a reference to the code like this you see the formulas and, and the codes wherever they are applicable so you can check in a granular way all the calculations in, in this uh, detail detail tab graphically the bearing pressures are shown in this tab, we saw that the maximum bearing pressure is 2.3, is uh, below the allowable maximum, so we are okay in bearing. This tab shows the one-way shear, so you can see that the shears are really small, so the shear is not, a, is not an issue. The punching shear, D over 2, all around the column, not an issue either for this, uh, for this footing. In this tab, you can see the uh, bending design, the moments generated by, by, by the bearing pressures acting in a cantilever portion of the footing. And the uh, effective face location is the, the, the column line in these cases. So using those generated moments, the program calculates uh, the capacity versus uh, these moments and uh, gives you the ratio for uh, flexion. If you had any columns, we don't have columns in this, in this example, but if you had columns, you can uh, design the pedestals here. And finally, the construction tab that shows uh, the reverse and uh, in, in elevation and, and in plan so that you can print out this and give it to to your drafter you can uh, generate a, a, a report the contents report similar to the contents tab that you just saw and uh, looks la like that is preformatted it can be uh, printed out and uh, send it to your checker and uh, your co-workers You can see also the whole report in, a, in, in just one view, four pages. Or you can see also the detailed report, similar to the detailed tab that you just saw. Similar way, uh, it's pre-formatted with all the calculations. Okay. So as you can see, what could be a very time-consuming calculation uh, is quite easy uh, using ASDIP Foundation. You can also continue trying to optimize the design. You can change rebars or uh, number of bars. Probably we can try here five by five and probably probably a thinner a thinner footing or a more reinforced footing. Anyway, th this is a, a very handy program to uh, optimize your design. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you in the next video.